Blake Snell to the Giants is official. He has passed his physical. How does this change the landscape of the National League West? And how does Snell compare to other aces in the National League West? We'll discuss it with Millard from Locked on D-backs next. You are Locked on Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015. I've been hosting this show now for five years, and I'm a lifelong Giants fan. Thank you for making Lockdown Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Check us out there, and please hit that subscribe button, thumbs up button, five star button button, wherever it is that you're following the show. Thank you so much. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. And coming up on today's show, kind of without further delay, I'm going to be talking with Millard Thomas from Locked On D-backs, who had some spicy Giants takes uh, when we recorded our National League West kind of division preview show a couple weeks ago, and so those takes seem very outdated now that the Giants have landed Snell. So we're going to be discussing how did the Giants get this, you know, smaller than expected deal done? How does this change the landscape of the West? Have the Giants leapfrogged the D-backs? And also, how does Snell compare to some other aces in the National League West? So without further delay, here's Millard from Locked on D-backs. But now, without further ado, to discuss Blake Snell to the Giants and to discuss if the Giants have leapfrogged the D-backs in the NL West standings, we, of course, got Ben Kaspic of Locked on Giants on today's podcast for a little crossover. Ben, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. I can't wait to discuss this, and uh, especially with the context of our uh, NL West preview kind of show that's coming out on the same day probably as this podcast so yeah. that's gonna be a lot of we got we got a lot to cover today millard yeah i'm i'm putting disclaimers out before that podcast <laughs> roundtable drops because guys we record that weeks ago i've been letting people know every time i've done that little you know ad break read like listen when i did it when that roundtable drops <laughs> the takes are gonna sound old because we record that about three weeks ago pre-snell pre-season before a lot of these big deals in the nl west because the giants are not done this offseason. The NOS is still chugging along. We just discussed recently uh, uh, Dylan Cease to the Padres on our podcast last week. But now, Ben, we got Blake Snell to the Giants, the reigning Cy Young Award winner, not even switching divisions, just switching teams. The Giants were a team that have quietly been picking up pieces as we've gotten later into the season. Jorge Soler was like, wasn't that like a post new year signing? You, yeah. you recently got Blake Snell this past week. Like how were the giants able to pull off the Blake Snell move? And why are they so late to the game when it comes to adding quality pieces? Well, Matt Chapman as well. Soler yeah, Chapman Chapman and Snell all signed in spring training after Which spring training crazy. started. And like you said, I mean, it's kind of unfair to you who had some takes like yeah. when we recorded it was like the beginning of spring trip I, I don't remember exactly when it was but you're right about no, three, it was three so weeks long ago. ago yeah it was so long ago we can't remember but um how did they do it well they were patient and the markets kind of collapsed for these guys and there were a bunch of teams that like normally spend that kind of were in a bind for various reasons you know the rsn deals for like the rangers and that's keeping them like there's mutual interest in jordan montgomery just for example there and they're still having a hard time getting that done and the yankees didn't want to pay because they'd have to pay 110 percent tax on every dollar spent be given where they are in the luxury tax situation and the dodgers are like done because they committed so much already the yeah. padres kind of for the first time in a while took a little bit of a step back from a spending standpoint i know they just traded for cease but he's 
relatively cheap. Um, and the Mets, right? They didn't they didn't go out and go crazy like they have in recent off seasons either. So Giants just kind of sat this one out and and just kind of were lurking, and it it did. It was just like, are they going to do it? They need to do this in order to get relevant again. Um, they've obviously tried to spend money in recent seasons, off seasons. You yeah, know, Correa, Judge, right? and Judge and Correa um, and Harper not that long ago as well. And they just haven't been able to get guys to take their money. But this off season, they nobody has spent more than the Giants except for the Dodgers this winter. And it's not really particularly close. And so it is an interesting question to ask, have they leapfrog have they leapfrogged the D backs? Um certainly they've leapfrogged quite a few teams that, you know, going into the off season they were probably behind. Yeah, and we don't we won't even get to that question just yet, Ben. I'm gonna I'm gonna save that little tease for yeah, segment yeah, yeah. number two here. Um but it seemed like the Houston Astros were maybe the other team in this race for Blake Snell. It sounded like it was coming down to those two teams. Why do you think Blake Snell decided to go with the with the Giants then? Uh, with the Giants then, did he want to stay on the West Coast? Was it just the familiarity of being still in the NL West? Like, what made him choose to stay or choose to sign with San Fran? Um, well, what I read was that the Astros balked at the asking price which i thought was kind of insane like i did a podcast the day that snell ended up signing he signed like in the evening and i did one in the morning where you know it was a bob nightingale report so i was like take this with a grain of salt (laughs) he's not always the most accurate reporter but he is a reporter um and he said that the astros were suddenly long shots because they were balking at the asking price of at least two years and $60 million. And I was like, what? Like, how much lower can you realistically expect this guy to accept coming off the season that he just came off of and the pedigree that he has, two Cy Young Awards, um, you know, two six two years, $60 million with an opt-out. Uh, what did the Astros expect, you know? is kind of like what, what I was thinking. Um, and the, it, again, it was a luxury tax situation where signing Snell would push them past the second threshold Mm -hmm. and for the giants before this signing they were under the first luxury tax threshold and so they were kind of uniquely not uniquely but among the teams that that actually were legitimate suitors for him they were the team with the most kind of ability to make the move without penalty right like the yankees it was a matter of the penalty with the tax. And I think with the Astros, it came down to the same thing, uh, which is their loss, you know, giants gained. So um, I'm just, I'm shocked a little bit at what chat, both Chapman and Snell ended up getting, like considering going into the off season, if you had told me Snell would get two years and 62 million and Chapman, I already forget what the contract is three years and uh, like what is it, 73 or 81 or something uh, million. And even Bellinger, you know, with the three-year deal, I think we thought those guys might get a combined 500 million plus. Oh, and here, I just got an email right now. Uh, The deal is now official. Giants have signed Blake (laughs) Snow. Well, the Giants have been a team in the last couple off seasons. Yes, they've tried to get those position players, but we've seen players like the Kevin Gosmans and the Carlos Rodons. Like the Giants have let them walk in free agency. So why was a guy like Blake Snell? Is it because even though the annual salary is high, is it because it's only a short term deal that the Giants don't mind paying for Snell? Is it because he's coming off a season where he won the Cy Young? Like why were the Giants pro? paying Blake Snell, but allowed guys like Carlos Rodon and Kevin Gosman, who were in their respective rights, also coming off strong seasons, allowing them to walk in free agency. Well, I mean, they did sign Rodon to a two-year deal. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's a case to make that they just, I mean, we've talked about this probably five different times over the years where they just have this seemingly have a preference for shorter term deals when it comes to free agent pitchers who are in their 30s, right? Mm-hmm. They did give a five-year extension to Logan Webb, but he's younger. And uh, they also really tried to sign Yoshinobu Yamamoto, but he's younger. He's 25 years old. And so I think it has to do with with age. Uh, and for Snell, the fact that 
the Giants didn't give him a five or six year deal. Nobody did, but the fact that they they weren't out there in out in front trying to do that uh, maybe speaks to that fact. And right now, Gosman's dealing with a shoulder injury, and Rodon last year it was kind of a disaster. So I don't know. Like, there's definitely. Yeah, do you um, think teams look at like that Rodon deal from last year and they're like, man, he already had that health history. He got the six for 180. Like maybe this offseason we just take a step back from all these, you know, mega pitcher contracts and do a little bit more, you know, short term overpay like the Giants did. Yeah, I think that teams like the Giants, they will prefer to pay a lot over a shorter term than to pay less per year over a longer term because you can end up getting stuck with, I mean, a famous example that we've definitely talked about before is Patrick Corbin, of course, former D-back. He was really, really good towards the end of his D-backs tenure. And then he's been like the worst pitcher in baseball since going to the, I mean, he had one good year there, I think. And then, and then speaking of the nationals, right? Steven Strasburg comes to mind. So there's just some scary kind of contracts that have happened for pitchers. And, um, I'm not saying I would have been upset if they had signed Snell to a long, longer term deal, like four or five years. Uh, but given that he's already 31, I mean, I was always saying like five at the most. I don't want to see anything more than five, probably. But to get him for two with an opt out is 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 big. And, and, and also the fact is that they've had two di- really disappointing seasons in a row. And so this is a team that's trying to win. They're not trying to like rebuild. They're trying to win. And so they felt a lot of pressure. The pressure has just ratcheted up in recent years as they've continued to flounder, uh, basically with just the one good year so, since 2016, they had 2021 with the 107 wins. But other than that, since 2016 Millard, they've just been, mediocre to bad Mm -hmm. and so it's they just feel a lot of pressure to get better well now you know the giants are coming off a pretty good offseason so lair chapman you traded for the robbie rays you added blake snell to the rotation so this giants team does have a lot more talent than last year i want to ask you ben if you think they have enough talent to now surpass the d-backs in the nl west standings but before we get into that conversation, if you, of course, want to catch any D-backs or Giants games this season, the best place to buy your tickets is going to be Game Time because Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. With zone deals, you pick the section and game time picks the seats for big time savings. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Back here on the Locked on Dimebacks crossover with Ben Kaspik of Locked on Giants. And Ben, I want to ask you if you think the Giants, after an offseason of, you know, recently in the last month and a half, making a flurry of moves to improve their lineup and rotation, if you think the Giants have done enough to surpass the D backs in the NL West, because I do have a couple of fan duel odds for you, Ben, that I want to throw out to you real quick. Because looking at like the odds for the Giants pre the Blake Snell signing, they were definitely behind the D backs and the Padres in the NL West projected standings. They were behind them in just, you know, the overall NL playoff field. But if you look at it right now, FanDuel has all the National League teams in one bracket as their percentage next to each team, their their odds to make the playoffs next to each team. And they actually have the Giants at plus 115 to make the playoffs. Padres plus 120. D-backs plus 125. So FanDuel is actually telling you right now they think the Giants are more likely to make the playoffs than the Padres or D-backs. But then if you look at division winner, they have the D-backs and Padres at plus 1,100, Giants at plus 1,200. So they think the Giants are more likely to get a wild card spot, but D-backs or Padres more likely to win the division somehow. 
So I say, yeah, I say all that to say it's basically even that they think the D backs, Giants, and Padres are basically all on the same level. So I want to ask you, how would you now divvy up those three teams in the NL West? It seems like everyone has the Dodgers one, everyone has the Rockies five, but that middle <laughs> meat of the NL West, Padres, Giants, and D backs, how would you now divvy up those three places? Everyone but you has the Rockies five. Okay, yeah, man. Hey, hey, don't spoil that that round table now. Hold on. Yeah, this tune is- in tomorrow for Pacific. Hiller here Miller bash the Giants pre knowing that they were gonna sign Chapman and Snell. But yeah, I mean t- um in all seriousness, it's hard to say. And that that those are some weird odds, you know, the mm-hmm. that um Giants favored over those other two to make the playoffs in general or right just to make yeah, the playoffs in general. in general yeah but the other two favored to win the division ahead of the giants that's a little <laughs> yeah. weird like it's yeah it's very I, strange how i can't really explain that um but it's i think there is a lot of parity in the national league outside of the two teams at the top and i would say the two teams at the bottom and uh, maybe the three teams maybe throw the pirates in there i think the pirates are probably a tier ahead of the rockies and the nationals but maybe 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 Maybe. not but but other than that i mean you look at the central i think you you look at i know you didn't ask me about about the central but you know i think there's four teams that could win the central and then you look at the west and there's three teams that could easily be the second place team in the west and of course you know 2021 taught giants fans and all of us that you never really know who's going to win the division, even if you think you do, even if you've got a juggernaut like the Dodgers. Um, Somehow the 2021 Giants won the West. But uh, like if I like I have no idea. That's the thing about baseball. We've been doing this long enough to know like baseball is really hard to predict. And I mean, last year, the D-backs, it's not like they won 95 games, right? They Mm -hmm. won 84 Negative and, differential entering the postseason. Yeah, and they, they had that horrible stretch like around the All Star break and and after, mm-hmm. um, and the Giants were ahead of them like probably going into September or thereabouts, and Giants fell apart, and the D backs leapfrogged them, and so did the Padres at the end because the Giants really fell apart towards the end, and so with all the moves that they've made, I mean, I could easily see it. I could easily see the Giants like having everything go right and having them win 90 games or or more maybe but mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not sitting here saying that I'm certain that's going to happen you know but I think that they're probably a team that wins more than 80 um and that's you know they didn't last year I think it's worth pointing out they won 79 only five fewer despite a horrible collapse they won you know, they were basically a 500 team last year and they've made a lot of moves to get better. And like Jung Hoo Lee, we didn't even mention. And Jordan Hicks is a really interesting pitcher that they added. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, full season of Patrick Bailey, who kind of broke out as a defensive monster last season. And, um, uh, Kyle Harrison in the starting rotation is is the top left-handed pitching prospect in baseball, and he debuted uh, last year. And fig- he's 22 years old, and he's going to be in that rotation from day one. And they've, all, like you said, they've also got Robbie Ray uh, coming back at some point, and he won the 2021 Cy Young Award. And they've got Alex yeah. Cobb coming back, and so oh. all of a sudden, it's you know Blake, uh, Logan Webb, Blake Snell. Robbie Ray, Alex Cobb, Kyle Harrison, Jordan Hicks, and then they've got a lot of young pitching even behind all those guys. Plus, you get a Matt Chapman, improves the offense and the defense. The defense has kind of been a problem in recent years. Uh, Jung Hoo Lee, I think, improves the offense and the defense. And Patrick Bailey, a full season of him, improves the defense. So, I don't know. I think things... it's. Uh, Long story short, I don't know. It's yeah. tough to say, but I like a lot. Like we didn't get a chance at, like in our previous crossovers. I've wanted to mention I like the moves that the D backs have made, but oh, it's you. also worth pointing out they won eighty four games with a negative run differential. It's not like yeah, they were yeah. some total juggernaut. It's just the mm-hmm. fact that they went to the World Series. 
that I'm, and they're, they're on the rise. That's the thing. It's a lot of their talent is young talent. Right. And so what do you think? I mean, do you think, how, how do you kind of see that? I never actually gave you a straight answer. <laughs> yeah. No, I it's fine. It, I don't know. It's a fine answer. It, it's they're like, all it, basically on the same know, level. Roll the dice, like pick, pick them out of a hat and, and, Let's just put the you know the Javi is not here, so let's just put the Padres fourth, uh, and okay. kind of call it you know one of the D backs or the Giants in second. Yeah, I was gonna say talking with Javi of Lockdown Padres. I think when we were debating between our two teams, I think we both decided like that number three spot in the rotation was going to be critical. E Rod versus you Darvish. We both thought that was going to be like the swing pieces for both of our teams. Whoever number three pitches. Whoever number three pitcher pitches better, we think will probably finish better in the standings. I wonder if the same is going to be true for the Giants because, like you just said, there could potentially be a full rotation there after Blake Snell, but I think there is some question marks. Kyle Harrison, how good will he be immediately as a rookie? How quickly does Alex Cobb come back? How quickly does Robbie Ray come back? And, you know, how good do both of those guys look coming off injury? So I think for the Giants, just as the same as the D-backs and Padres, like whoever that third guy is, behind Blake Snell and Logan Webb might just be just as important because I think that number three piece and the rotation for Giants, D-backs, and Padres are all going to be like the major X factor for those three teams as we, you know, go through the regular season and even the number four starter as well because, you know, it could be Michael King for the Padres. It could be fought for the D-backs or, you know, if you get your guys back, it could be Kyle Harrison. Maybe he's the breakout pitching prospect this upcoming season because is he fully rookie eligible for this upcoming year? I mean, he pitched some uh, last year, but I, th- I do believe he is still a rookie because he didn't pitch that much. Yeah. Interesting. Well, Ben, I also want to play a little game in segment number three. Now that you have Blake Snell, I want to play this little game of we're going to say a name. It's going to be Blake Snell or the other pitcher. So it's going to be different aces in the NOS. I want you to tell me you're going to take Snell or the other guy in the NOS. So we're going to play that game in segment number three so we can decide if Blake Snell is still the best pitcher in the NOS, of course, coming off the Cy Young Award. But if you want to, you know, do any picks with a Blake Snell, potentially win some money, then the best place to do that is prize picks because football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fancy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. You can now win up to a hundred times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn ten dollars into one thousand dollars with NBA. NHL and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. So just go download the app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app Prize Picks, use code all lowercase Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, all right, all right. Back here, Locked On crossover, Ben Caspic of Locked On Giants. And Ben, I want to play a little game to decide if you think Blake Snell is the best pitcher in the NOS. So I'll give you Blake Snell, and then I'll give you a random ace pitcher from the NOS, and you tell me who you who you would rather have. Okay. We'll start off with our guy, Blake Snell or Zach Gallen. Who would you rather? I, I got to do this without looking up any numbers or anything Dude, like we're that. We're going right off the gut. Right off the guy, uh, and, and we're these just, guys. Yeah, I mean, I've seen them. Um, you know, uh, yeah. But are we talking like forgetting about contracts? We're just talking like ace of your rotation. You, okay, but under what terms? Just for next year? Yeah, this year, this upcoming season. Who do you want to lead your staff? Ben? Throw the contracts aside. Oh, throw the age aside. Pure um, talent. Who do you want? I can't help myself. I'm looking at Zach Gallon's numbers. I'm sorry. You uh, can do it. I'm taking Blake Snell. Man, all right. Number one, Snell over Gallon. Number That's two, close. it's close though. They all these are going to be close. I mean, I'm not going to fight you really either way. I mean, that, those were the two finalists, right? So, uh, Blake Snell won it, but you could have given it to Zach Gallon the first 60% of the season last year. So I'm not going to fight you either way. Blake Snell or the other pitcher for the Giants, Logan Webb. 
Mm. I'm going to take Logan Webb because of okay. command, command and innings. Uh, Webb led the major leagues in innings. And Webb has just, uh, Snell, Snell is a little bit inconsistent at times in his career. And he's had some down years. And he's had, you know, he led the uh, majors in walks, you know. And so for, for Webb, I think the, the floor is high and the ceiling is high. For Snell, the ceiling is super high, but the floor is a little bit lower. And I think you're just, it's a little more kind of steady, eddy, reliable for Logan Webb. Uh, it just depends on what you want. It kind of reminds me of like Tim Lincecum and Matt Cain for a while. Okay. It was kind of like you get your steady Eddie Matt Cain. You get your like extreme upside Tim Lincecum. Ooh. Sounds um, like a good podcast title. Is Blake Snell Logan Webb the new Lincecum Matt Cain? I don't know. <laughs> that might have to be a podcast. Be. Or Randy Johnson, Kurt Schilling. Uh, okay. The last two, the last two first and second place Cy Young award vote getters to be in a rotation together the next year were uh, okay, Schilling back. and Johnson. And now it's Snell and Webb. That's a fun fact. Okay, maybe that's yeah. your podcast title then. <laughs> Blake Snell or Tyler Glass now? Snell all day. Glass now, I'm sorry, but he's hurt all the time. I mean, how many innings? He's thrown like nine innings in the last four years or something. Crazy. Hey, he's like coming that. off his career high, 120 innings pitch oh. last season. So Okay, you know. okay, okay. I'm tripping then. Yeah, but before that. That's his career high, 120, though. Okay, that, that was like career something. high, 120. And I don't know, the number, less walks, but the numbers otherwise look kind of similar in terms of strikeouts, strikeout rate is what I mean. And, you know, run prevention wasn't as good. He, he's just not as durable. I think it's probably closer than I, I gave it, you know, with by calling it an easy call. But I think... You know, Glass now has had a he's been made of glass, so to speak. That's fair. And, uh, and so I'm taking the guy who's been Snell for all his, you know, for the faults that he does have, he's been more durable. Mm -hmm. Hey, if Glass now pitches 180 innings, he might win the Cy Young. We've yeah, just totally. never seen him get anywhere close to that. So he has to stay healthy for us to give him a little bit more respect, probably. How about Snell or a guy we've never seen before? Yamamoto. I got to go Yamamoto. Like just wow. to be, yeah, I, okay. I, I'm not one of these guys who says, what, the Dodgers are crazy for giving him this money, even though he's never thrown a pitch in the majors. Um, I think that he's going to be a star. I think, you know, the Dodgers don't make that kind of commitment just for nothing. I think there were a lot of smart teams that were after this guy for similar money, including the Giants, including the Mets. Um, even though the Mets didn't, really spend one guy they were willing to make an exception on was Yamamoto and uh, maybe not in, maybe not next year, you know, maybe it takes him a, a minute to adjust or whatever. So that, but still when all is said and done, I, I think that Yamamoto is kind of a complete pitcher. He's not going to have the command issues that Snell has. He probably will strike people out. And I think the durability is there and he's just, he's just a complete picture where there 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 are some flaws that you can point to with snell i got kind of a wild one snell or joe musgrove which i think could be a little bit closer than what may people may think if you take like the full body work from like the last three years just because Snell has a little bit of that up and down nature yeah this is another one where i really want to look at the numbers because yeah uh joe musgrove you know like yeah he's so, basically been like a three man. year rate flat the last three years like i think his numbers yeah. are more impressive than what people realize when they just hear the name joe musgrove I, yeah i mean joe musgrove is good and underrated and we saw him kind of really perform well in the postseason for them when they uh were were in the made it to the nlcs in 22 only pitched though 97 innings last year mm -hmm. so i don't really know i don't oh he didn't he like break his toe or something in a weight room accident i think so that's a tough one. Um, uh, I'm, I, oh man, Miller, man. this is a tough game. I might have to go Joe Musgrove just to be fully, interesting. Okay, yeah. I thought you would have said Snell easily, but when you do look at the numbers, you're like, dang, Joe actually yeah. good ERA, good strikeout numbers, and doesn't walk people. He does like everything you'd want a, a really good consistent. Top two to do. Yeah, and like he does throw the innings. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I. As long as the injury last year was just the toe and and like a freak weight room accident, I think he dropped like a kettlebell on his toe. Um, 
I would have ouch, to look it up now. Ouch. But um if you know, if it was like an arm injury or something that I'm forgetting about, then I'll definitely take Snell. But it's close. Again, like these these are good, these are premier talents. Yeah, these are all guys that we're going to face in the NOS. I mean, there's going to be guys. I got one more name for you, but names I'm not going to mention, like you Darvish, Walker Bueller, Eduardo Rodriguez, Clayton Kershaw, uh, Robbie Ray, potentially. Like, there's still going to be potential, you know, top two pitchers that we're not even going to discuss in this little exercise that are going to be number three for some of our teams in the NOS. So very stacked pitching group in the division. But last one for you, Ben, Blake Snell or the other new newbie to the nos dylan cease Hmm. and i throw this one me and javier talking about it blake snell is basically the lefty dylan cease you look at the strikeout numbers you look at the walk rates like they're kind of the same guy they're just one's a righty and one's a lefty yeah and i'm gonna i'm gonna go snell here Hmm. and i mean if you i think that cease obviously if you look at it holds the edge in durability and like innings uh, the last three years, um, I assume in 2020, it was 12 starts in 2020. I assume that was a full season, but he's made 32, 32 and 33 starts the last three seasons, uh, no lower than 165 and two thirds innings with high strikeout rates. But the reason I have to go with Snell is two out of those three years, we're talking last year, Cease had an ERA of four, five, eight. And Snell was at like, what, 2.20, basically Mm -hmm. like literally more like less than half of Cease's ERA. So how am I going to go with Cease there? And then uh, in 2021, Cease's ERA was 391. Although what's crazy is that actually Cease had a 2.20 ERA two years ago, which wasn't that exactly what I just said was Snell's ERA last year. So that's an that is an interesting one it's kind of recency bias but Mm -hmm. you got to go with recency bias if it's if it's kind of that close i'm going to go with who was better most recently and that was definitely snell cease the peripheral numbers were good you know strikeouts and all that but um the era was over four and a half so i got to go with snell sorry i think my wi-fi dropped out there for a second at the end uh, when you're talking, but thankfully we are at the very end of the podcast. I might have lost like the last 10 seconds of what you said there. So I don't know if you want to recap what you just said there for the last 10 seconds, just in case. Snell over cease. ERA okay. was better. <laughs> in- Sum it up. So basically after doing this game, the only pitchers you think are better than Blake Snell in the NOS are Logan Webb, Yamamoto and Joe Musgrove. And I don't know if other people would have picked those, you know, names to say, are better than Blake Snell. So very interesting list. I don't think anyone would argue too hard because those are elite pitchers in the game. They're all in the division, which is potentially going to be the toughest division in baseball. Do you think it's going to be the toughest division this year, them or the AL East? Them or the AL East, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, the AL East, uh, I probably I would give it to the... Before the Giants went ham the last month, I would probably have given it to the AL East, but it may... Giants doing what they've done the last month has maybe changes it, but man, there's some good teams, like, like several very good teams in the East. Whereas, you know, the three teams outside of the Dodgers in the West, like maybe aren't quite on the same level. I don't know. Tough again, hard to predict, but it's one of the two, one of the two for sure. I think. Yeah. And I think we're going to have to make another offline wager, Ben, who is going to finish higher in the NOS standings? I mean, you got the reigning Cy Young Award winner, so it's going to be a little bit tougher now, but we'll definitely chat offline. D-backs versus Giants. I still got to cook out your graphic. You never for made me start. pay, hey, man. I'm going to make you pay. We're going to make it for the start of the regular <laughs> season. That's how I'm going to do it. Then we're going to remind everyone to start the year. Millard won last year's bet. I think that's a great <laughs> I don't way. No, you may have expired, man. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to cook it up. We'll see, but... <laughs> That is Ben Caspic of Locked On Giants. Ben, where can the listeners find you online? Uh, at Ben Caspic on Twitter, K A S P I C K. Uh, and the show, Locked On Giants, on Twitter, L- at L O underscore S F Giants. And then on YouTube and wherever you can find your podcast, the show is called Locked On Giants. And how about you, Millard? Where can my listeners find your great work? 
Yep, at Creator Thomas 24 for my personal account on Twitter. Look up a Locked on Dimebacks, both Twitter, Instagram for the podcast handle. And please hit subscribe to Locked on Dimebacks on YouTube as well as the Locked on Giants. Ben Caspic, another crossover. We'll definitely be talking again in the future. We'll be making some wagers. And please, guys, remember that roundtable that you probably hear today. That was recorded weeks ago. Deuces, everyone.